Good morning everyone, my name is Robert and uh, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about my project on FITUNA based theranostics in vascular calcification. I'm a medical doctor and therefore have a very practical view of the problem. An average human body contains approximately one kilogram of calcium, which is more than all other metals put together. So we can say that calcium is a key currency of bones and teeth. Once being incorporated into skeletons of primitive animals about 550 million years ago, it was one of the driving forces of the Cambrian explosion of life, when the major animal phyla first appeared. But even, uh, nevertheless, uh, even such a valuable investment of evolution can cause troubles in excessive amounts. Problems begin when calcium starts to um, precipitate in soft tissues in vas and vasculature. This process, called ectopic calcification, is not only associated with aging, but also accompanies a large number of diseases, such as atherosclerosis, chronic kidney disease and cancer. Cardiovascular calcification causes hardening of blood vessels they become fragile and prone to bleed spontaneously. And this fact significantly compromises the outcomes of surgeries in heart disease patients. So uh, if we now have a look on this slide, these are two X-ray images of mice and they may look similar at first glance, but it's not the case. If you pay close attention to the bottom right picture, we'll see a lot of tiny uh, white spots like almost in every part of the animal's body. And these white shadows uh, indicate areas of extensive soft tissue calcification which occurred in these mouse and created this huge divergence between its chronological and biological age. Nowadays, pharmaceutical industry provides drugs that can uh, stop progression of, bi uh, of ectopic mineralization, but none of them can help the situation once the dystrophic calcification affected arteries and spread throughout the body. The aim of my uh, research project is to develop a tool that can be used um, like in a treatment of vascular calcification. What would be the possible solution? Imagine that you're at school and a boring math class is about to begin. One way to upset a class would be to get rid of chalk so that your teacher can't write anything on the blackboard. So one purely hypothetical pupil with low knowledge of chemistry could try to dissolve it in water, but it's not likely to work. Well, in addition, my teacher flew into temper because of the wet chalk. But I kept trying, and next time I put chalk uh, in, in a cup with vinegar, which is an acidic fluid, and finally the tormented piece of calcium carbonate disappeared in, in a cloud of bubbles. So that was my lesson from school. If you want to get rid of calcium, you have to eat some acid first. But why can't we actually do the same with the ectopic calcifications in our body? So, while being uh, easy to perform in a chemical glass, this experiment appears to be extremely challenging in a body where the pH level is uh, maintained within the narrow range to sustain life. On the other hand, human body produces cells called osteoclasts that can actively resorb bone containing calcium salt hydroxyapatite. In fact, the mechanism utilized by these cells is so effective that during first year of life almost 100% of skeleton is resorbed and replaced in human's body. Uh, osteoclasts are close relatives of monocytes, which is a type of circulating white blood cells um, responsible for uh, immune response. Well, uh, the sad thing is that osteoclastic resorption is restricted exclusively to bones and teeth. And what if we could cause production of osteoclasts outside of bone at sites of ectopic calcification? We would need a tool that can firstly target areas of ectopic mineralization and secondly drive osteoclast production. Fetuin A, a protein produced in liver and showing extremely high affinity for calcium phosphate, could be a perfect candidate for the first task. Its calcium binding properties protect organism against mineralization outside of bone. So the difference between these two mice was that the one at the bottom of the slide was lacking fetuin A gene, so no protein was produced. And this is the reason why such an aggressive calcification developed in its tissues. So sadly, fetuin A itself can't cause production of osteoclasts. 
The molecule, which is responsible for osteoclastogenesis, is called rank L. It is secreted by a number of bone cells in a paracrine manner. That means that the substance induces a formation of osteoclasts near the cells it was produced by. So, basically, rank L binds to its natural receptor on the surface of osteoclast precursors and causes production of giant cells that are capable of bone resorption. Our idea was to couple rank L to fituin A in order to obtain a fusion construct which would have functional properties of both proteins. After a lot of trial and error, finally one of the initially designed chimeric proteins was purified. Then the construct was tested uh, in monocyte cultures obtained from diabetic patients who showed signs of vascular calcification. And what we could observe was that this construct not only worked, but had even higher ability to cause osteoclast production than the natural analog rank L. We incubated monocytes, which are osteoclast precursors, on thin bone slices and treated them either with rank L, which is their natural activator, or with our newly generated fusion construct. And what you can see here, these uh, dark blue spots and tracks, they depict areas where uh, osteoclast precursors activated by rank L add up the bone disc surface. But the cells which were fed with our fusion construct were overstimulated uh, as almost the entire surface of the bone slice was destroyed. This phenomenon can be explained by the binding properties of, of the molecule. It seems that the fituin A part of our fusion construct allows the whole molecule to really attach to hydroxyapatite of the bone surface and continuously activate osteoclast precursors. This is preliminary data and some experiments will be carried out in order to prove functional activity of the protein. But even these promising results give a hope that new therapies uh, for vascular calcification may appear in the nearest future. Although I'm a surgeon, I believe that the best surgery is the one that was avoided. With this, I'd like to thank you for your attention.